I'd like to talk today a little bit about drilling in the lathe. There's a variety of ways you can drill in the lathe, and in fact, you can use the lathe as a pretty darn good drill press for up to reasonably sized objects. Let's look at some of the ways. The most common way that most everyone knows about for drilling in the lathe is having a piece mounted on a faceplate or in a chuck. And we're going to mount a drill in the tailstock and drill a hole into it. One problem is that this end is smooth and the brad point or the point of a twist drill won't always go right on center here. So a very good little trick is to start up your lathe and use the point of your skew to just scrape a little center dimple right there. It's the same as a center punch mark that you would put in any piece to drill it. We now can slide our tailstock forward and we can pick up that dimple. There we've got perfectly centered hole and using our tailstock ram ruler here engraved into it, I can drill to any depth I wish. Nothing could be simpler. A less known way to drill in the lathe is to mount a drill in the headstock spindle. I have a nice keyless chuck here. They're very nice around lathes because there's no key to be thrown out. This one's a 5 8 so it'll take a wide range of drills. This is the best way to drill a spindle turning. Here I have a tool handle. We have the original center marks. We turned it on right here and we can simply put that over the end of the drill and use the tailstock to push it into the spinning drill. Now you want to grip this well beyond where whatever depth you're going to drill to. If you want to drill all the way through, such as with a pepper mill, you're going to drill halfway, keeping your hands clear, and then you're going to turn it around. And most centers will go into the bore of a pepper mill, but if it doesn't, you can turn a little tapered plug to put in there to catch with your tailstock center, drill from the other direction, and you have a perfectly centered hole in your piece. So I'll start up my lathe and just push that right into the piece. I can read the depth I want to go to on the scale on my tailstock quilt. And there we have a perfectly straight hole. The handle will come out of the tool straight. Great way to drill spindles. A frequent drilling task for things turned in a lathe is to drill regularly spaced holes, either on the periphery of the object or into the face of it. Into the face, an example would be a stool seat where we wanted to drill three or four uh, holes for legs that were at a given angle and splayed out evenly from the center of the turning. The other one would be drilling holes around here as I am now. Uh, a good example would be a wheel hub. We often use the indexing in the lathe for this. I'm doing the odd number holes of this 24 spacings on this indexing system to give me 12. And by building this simple jig, I simply attach this upright to this plate with a couple of drywall screws. I've clamped it to the bed and I drilled it in a drill press on the center height of the lathe. I found that height by putting a center in the lathe and then rubbing this post across that and put a scratch line. I then went to the center of that and drilled through in a drill press for the size drill I'm using, in this case, a six millimeter.
and there I'm getting perfectly spaced holes around the periphery of this tourney. As I mentioned, the shop built jig will drill 40 or 50 holes, but eventually the act of drilling itself will make the hole through the jig go oversize and it loses accuracy. If you're going to do a lot of this kind of work, One Way Manufacturing makes a very nice jig called the Drill Wizard. It has a one inch post, so any lathe that accepts one inch tool rests will handle the jig. You simply place it in the banjo after squaring the banjo in the place you decide. You then align this so that it touches just on the center line of the lathe. You do that by adjusting it in the post. You then can lay off any angle with a scale on the base of the jig here so it can be turned to any angle you desire. You simply start up the drill, run it forwards, and drill your hole. You have a nifty adjustable depth stop right here that you can adjust it to any depth you wish. It's a very handy jig. You can actually turn your lathe into a common drill press, albeit one laying on its side. Think of a drill press laid on a set of saw horses, if you will. But by making what's called a drill pad, and they're easily made. I took a disc of maple and then I took a piece of ash and I turned a Morse taper on that piece of ash and then a one half inch tenon which I glued into this circle of wood. I then mounted it in the headstock spindle and took a scraper and scraped this dead flat. That gives me an absolutely square surface to the axis of the lathe. I can now put that in the tailstock spindle, and we now have a drill press. The, yeah, the table goes up and down rather than the spindle going up and down, but it works the same way. And you can drill reasonably sized pieces with this drill press. Can't drill huge ones, of course, but all I need to do is set that on my drill table. This is a Forstner bit. And there you can see I handily drilled a very nice hole in this square of wood. Some safety tips. Keep speeds moderate. I'm drilling at about 750 RPMs. I've never drilled faster than 1,000 throughout this little demonstration. Use the right drill for the job. I go into drill types in the article that uh, this video accompanies. And be sure and clear your drill frequently, especially small twist drills because they will load up with chips. I've seen them so impacted in students' pieces that we had to take a chisel and split the piece of work apart to get the drill back. So by bringing the drill back out of the work frequently, you clear those chips out of the flute and you will have smooth drilling. Thanks for visiting my shop. It was a pleasure to have you here.